Hello and welcome to Agora's Unreal Engine Blueprint Quick Start Demo. In this video, we will be building a one-to-one -one video call using Agora inside an Unreal Engine game. Before we get started, here is an example of what we're going to be making. In three steps. The first step will be a UI screen like this, where we can choose what channel to join. The second step will be an Agora Manager that manages interactions between the player and the Agora engine. Last will be widgets that populate the scene whenever new players pop in. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. First we're going to open up our Unreal Engine project we downloaded from GitHub. Inside the project, we have a level called Video Call Level BP, which is another example of one-to-one -one calling. However, we're going to be building ours from scratch. First thing we want to do is click Add New, go to Add Feature or Content Pack, and click Third Person. We're going to add some Unreal assets to use in our demo. Now that we have our assets, go into third person BP folder, click maps, and open the third person example map. Once that loads, we can see we have an Unreal Engine game we can run around in. Go back into content folder, click into the blueprints folder, and inside the blueprints folder, create a new folder called call demo. This way we can have all of our assets in one spot. First we're going to build the channel joining widget. Right click inside the folder, select user interface and click widget blueprint. Call it channel joiner bp. Open it up and see that we now have the Unreal Widget Editor open. Whatever we see in this widget editor is what will display on screen for the widget. Search for edible text in the palette window and drag it in. Drag in a common button as well. Let's name our button Join button and our text Channel Text. Inside of our button, we're going to drag some more text in. See how it snaps in and set the text to Join. Inside of our Channel Text, we're going to include some hint text called Channel Name. Bump up the font size to 40 and center the text out. To make this look a little cleaner, I'm going to take my channel text anchor and set it to centered. Set the position X and Y to 0, set the X to 400, size Y to 100, and set the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. With our join button, we will do the same thing. Set the anchor to centered, position x to 0, position y to 100, size x to 200, size y to 100, and the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. OK, so we've got a button to click and text that we can set. As a nice polishing detail, let's add some background blur. Search for blur and drag it into the widget. Expand the borders to fill the screen. Set the blur strength to 80. And drag the background blur behind everything else in the canvas panel to properly arrange the order.
Now that we have our channel joiner widget created, we're going to create our Agora Manager. Right click in the Call Demo folder, go to Blueprint Class, then Actor, and name the new Blueprint Agora Manager underscore BP. Double click the new Blueprint to open it up, and now we're going to do some actual Blueprinting. We don't need these nodes, so let's delete them. A quick word about Unreal Visual Scripting. Flow moved from left to right through the nodes, as opposed to top to bottom when reading typed code. For example, to script a print statement, I'll drag a pin from the white triangle, release the mouse and search for print to attach a print node. Now we can type hello world, save and compile, and we will see hello world printed to our screen. With the basic understanding out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. First we want to be able to see the mouse when we play the game. Right click in the event graph and search for get player controller. Drag a wire off of the blue pin and search for set show mouse cursor. What this does is it allow us to see our mouse instead of hiding it after starting the game. Check the empty box to set the value to true. Next we're going to create our channel joiner widget. Right click in the event graph and search for create widget and in the purple class drop down select channel joiner BP. Now drag the blue wire from the return widget that has been created and create an add to viewport node. Now with our channel joiner being created during game start, we're going to start scripting with Agora SDK. Drag a new pin and create a construct object from class node, and we want to create an object of type Agora. To demonstrate a nifty Unreal shortcut of creating variables, I can right click the blue return value pin from my construct agora node, select promote to variable, and automatically create and set the variable in one shot. Name the variable agora engine. Search for self and plug in the self node into the outer parameter of construct agora. Before we go any further, a quick word is in order for how Unreal Blueprints are organized. If we drag off the blue pin from our Agora engine and search initialize, we can see the function listed under the Agora section. Without specifically searching for anything, we can see all the different events, functions, and variables that we have accessible to us provided by the Unreal engine, separated by the sections organizing the code. If we look at the Agora section, we can find all the Agora specific code and features found in the SDK. If you would like to look at all the features, callbacks, etc., search through the Agora section to get an understanding as to what is provided. Hopefully this sidebar helps everyone to navigate the Unreal Visual Scripting Editor as it can be overwhelming when you are first getting started. Moving on, let's initialize our Agora engine. So drag off the blue pin from our newly set Agora engine and search for initialize. You must, must include your app ID here or else the SDK will not work. Add your app ID now so you don't forget. Once Agora is initialized, let's get the Agora engine and enable video.
After this, get the Agora engine again and script join channel. Another Unreal tip you can use, separate getter nodes for each individual node that you create. Or you can drag wires from the same node. It's all the same and only makes a visual difference. To set our channel ID string to that of our user entered channel name, we have to back it up to our widget. Promote the created widget to a variable and name it channel joiner. From here, we get the text from inside our channel joiner and plug it into the channel ID. Drag a get node of channel joiner. Another quick sidebar, you can click and drag variables onto the event graph to which you will have the option to either get or set. By holding command on a Mac or control on a PC while dragging the variable onto the event graph, you will automatically create a getter node. You can automatically create set nodes by holding Option on Mac or Alt on PC. This is a huge time saving shortcut I'd highly recommend. Okay, back to the channel joiner. Search for Get Channel Text. Create a node, and from that node, search for a Get Text node. You can see that get text returns a value of type text, which is a light pink pin. You can also see our channel ID is of type string and is a darker pink. Unreal will automatically handle the cast from text to string by dragging the text pin to the string pin, as shown by the resulting cast node created. We've initialized our engine, we've enabled the video, and have joined a channel. Now we have to create the callback events that indicate when a local and remote user have joined the channel. Get another reference to the Agora engine, and search for a sign on join channel success delegate. What this is doing is initializing the callback that will fire the red event note every time a local user joins the Agora channel. Another neat tip, highlight the whole group of nodes, press the C key, and create a comment. Type in local join for our comment message. This is how you comment code in visual scripting and all nodes inside the comment can be moved around as one unified group. Let's do the same thing for remote users. Grab an Agora engine reference and search for a sign on user join delegate. This fires whenever our remote user joins the channel. Make another comment saying remote join.
and to test whether this is working, we could make a print statement that would call out whenever a user joins. As a quick recap, we have created the widget that allows us to choose what channel name we want with a join button. We constructed our Agora engine, initialized it with our app ID, enabled the video and channel joining, and created the callback events to handle functionality for when local and remote users join in. Now that we've created the bones of our Agora manager, we're now going to create the widgets that pop in whether a new user joins the Agora channel. Create another widget blueprint, so right click, go to user interface and select widget blueprint. We're going to name this Agora video underscore BP. We want to get an image and drag it into the center stage. Set the anchor to center, X and Y to 0, and alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. I like to set the size to 700 by 700, but feel free to set it to the size you find best. As a result, we will have a floating image that is rendering each frame passed in by the camera from the Agora Manager. Rename the image to Agora Video Frame and compile it. Now we're going to insert the functionality for our video frame in the event graph. Get rid of pre construct and tick. Nodes that are colored red indicate an unreal event. The event will fire during a specific case, and in this example, when the widget is constructed in the scene. To handle our functionality, we will create a new event. So right click in the event graph and type create custom event and name it Agora Video Setup. Inside the script, we are going to be hooking into more of the Agora SDK callback methods to get our rendered video frames. To do so, we need a reference to the Agora engine. Let's create a new variable called Agora engine and set it to type Agora. Because our event is custom, we can determine parameters to be plugged into it for us to use. Under Inputs, select New Parameter and create an input named Agora of type Agora. Now set your Agora engine variable from the new Agora input from the event. Create another input of type Boolean named isLocal that we'll use to determine if our video frame is local or not. From the Agora engine, create a callback by searching for assign on local frame receive delegate. This callback event is different in that it will fire every time a frame is received, essentially calling this function every frame. Next, grab our Agora video frame, the image that we created in our widget designer panel. Get a reference and call the function set brush from texture to set our image picture to each new frame.
This event fires whenever we receive a frame from the local camera, in this case the computer webcam, so we'll need to check if isLocal is set to true. We do that by creating a branch node as it's called in Unreal. You can search for a branch or simply search if to create the node. It's essentially an if statement, if true do x, if false do y. Create an is local boolean variable and set it using the output from our Agora video setup event. That way we have easy reference to that state. From here, plug in the is local variable and if it's true, set brush from texture. Quick sidebar, generally in Unreal, devs try to keep the right wires as straight as possible and keep wires from crossing each other for visual cleanliness. You can access a cool shortcut by double clicking on any wire. By doing so you will create a reroute node that allow you to organize your wires in a way that's cleaner and more visually appealing. You can also create the reroute node separately, which is essentially a blank pin that you can connect any wires of the same color to. So we check if is local is equal to true. If so, set the brush from texture every local frame received. Next we'll do the same thing for remote frames received, by checking if is local is equal to false. Get an instance of the Agora engine and search for a sign on remote frame received delegate. Wire everything up like our previous event and clean up the wire so everything looks nice. In summary, on every remote frame received from Agora SDK, if is local is set to false, set our brush from texture. On every local frame received, if is local is set to true, set our brush from texture. We are good to go here. We've compiled, we've saved, and everything is looking good. A quick note about widgets. I don't believe you can simply drop widgets into world space. So we're going to create an empty actor to handle that. Create another blueprint class, select actor, and name it Agora Video underscore BP. This will be an empty transform we can drag into the world of our video widgets. Open up the new actor, click add component and add a widget component. Name it Agora Video. In the details panel, find widget class and set the class to Agora Video Frame underscore BP. Now our widget is showing in the viewport. As you can see the widget is clipping through the floor plane. So drag the video widget up to 250 units in the Z axis of the transform. Compile, save, and we're good to go. We don't need to add any code, we're simply going to spawn it in and allow our widget to handle the code. 
Now that we've created the Agora video widget and widget holder, we're going to spawn the widget holder into the scene using the Agora manager. Before we do that, however, let's create a couple spawn points for our video holders. Drag in an empty actor into the scene and name it spawn point 1. Select the spawn point and hold option while dragging the actor to duplicate it and move it into a new location. I believe on PC the shortcut is alt drag. Last, rotate each actor 180 degrees around the Z axis. If we don't, the video frames will spawn and flipped, and will trick you into thinking they never spawned at all. Let's go back to our Agora manager and create two new variables of type actor called spawn1 and spawn2. Make them public variables by clicking the eye to the right of them, exposing the variable to the editor. To demonstrate this, I've made only one spawn point public, and by compiling and hopping back in the editor, we can see only one spawn point is showing in the Agora Manager. Make both variables public and assign them in the editor. I'm assigning them using the eyedropper tool named Pick Actor from Scene, where you can grab the specific actor you want to slot in. Go to the local join event and spawn actor from class. Assign the player video holder actor in the class slot. Grab the spawn one actor, get its actor transform and plug it into the spawn transform. We now need to access the custom event we created inside our widget blueprint to initialize the widget with the proper stats. The widget doesn't initialize on play and can only be set up from our custom event. To get the widget component on our video holder, search the return value pin for the component's name, Agora Video. Once you have a reference to Agora Video, create a node to get user widget object, allowing us to access the functionality of the actual component. Before calling that event, however, we must cast the user widget object to type agora video underscore bp to check if the object is actually compatible with what we want to do. On successful cast, call the Agora video setup event and hook up the Agora engine reference. And set is local to true because we are inside of our local join event. Now we do essentially the same thing for our remote user join event, but setting is local to false.
We now have our events completed, so compile and save, and we are good to move to the last steps. Before we package our project, let's complete some final steps. Hopping into the Agora Manager, we can see that we're creating our channel join widget, creating our Agora engine, and then creating our video holder widgets. What we don't have is any way to remove the channel joiner widget from the screen when we punch in our desired channel. When we press join, the UI will stay on screen and block our view. We'll keep this initial sequence of functionality, the widget creation, and leave it during the event begin play. However, we want to initialize Agora and subscribe to the callback events when the join button of our UI is pressed. To do so, create a custom event called join Agora channel and hook it into the node chain. On event begin play, we will be creating the widget that holds the button that when pressed will fire the initialization of our Agora engine. To set up that button functionality, switch into the channel joiner blueprint. Enter the designer view of the widget and click the join button. In the bottom of the details panel of the join button, you will see a series of events that can be accessed and subscribed to. Click on clicked and watch how a new event is created inside the event graph. Once we create the event, we want to call our newly created join Agora channel event inside the Agora manager. Create a node of get actor of class and search for the Agora manager. From the return value, call the join Agora channel event and compile. Switch back to Agora manager and in our join Agora channel, Add a new node of Remove All Widgets to clear the channel joiner widget. To recap, we're initializing our engine, enabling video, and joining a channel. But we're missing something here. Get an instance of the engine and search for node mute local video stream and leave it set to false. This way our video feed automatically broadcasts to other user devices that join, like the Agora web example showcase one-to-one -one video caller for example. As a final step before we package the project, we must assign the third person map as our default map in our build. To do that, click Settings, Project Settings, on the left hand side click Maps and Modes. Switch both maps under Default Maps to Third Person Example Map, which is the map we downloaded to our content in the beginning of this demo. You can leave the rest of the settings as they are. Now all that's left is to build the game itself. Click Save All. Inside the map view, you can click File, Package Project to build your game for the desired platform. However, while in a blueprint view, this option is not available in the taskbar. So be sure that you're in the level view when building a project to avoid confusion. Click File, Package Project, 
I'm using a Mac, so I choose Mac. Inside your project file structure, create a new folder titled Builds to send your packages to. Time for the moment of truth. So we've covered in this demo how to use Agora and Unreal Engine, and I'd like to give a quick word on why we are using Agora. At Agora, we've built our own private network that's optimized for real-time voice and video streaming, providing a breadth of features to allow everyone to interact with anyone. Agora also gives devs the depth to control every single pixel that comes through their channels. This enables you to tune and tweak video and audio for any feature you can think of for your games, live broadcasts, and apps. Imagine warping the colors of your video stream based on events in the game, or enabling thousands of users from all over the world to interact with real-time video and audio embedded contextually in your experience. With that being said, our build is almost ready. Three, two, one. Now that our packaging is complete, let's go into our build folder and find the project. This next step is the most easily overlooked and most likely to cause a false negative. If you're using a Mac, right click on the app, file. Select show package contents, open the contents folder, open the info.plist file. We must add two new items to the list, one for microphone and one for camera permissions. When you hover over the top line saying, information property list, you will see a plus sign. Click that plus sign and in the new item search for privacy dash cam and it will auto populate with camera permissions. Do the same thing with privacy dash mic and it will fill with microphone permissions. On the right side under value type in cam and mic for the respective entries, command s to save the file and close it out. Now we're good to go. Open the app file and run the build. If you weren't able to see any screens, double check that they aren't flipped around and simply hiding from you. To test another user joining our channel, I use Agora's web calling showcase to connect a remote user into my scene. Thank you very much for checking out our video. See you next time.